Memorex. It's the most recognizable name in computer supplies and accessories. For over 30 years, Memorex has built their reputation on their unique understanding of the needs of the PC user and has been on the forefront in creating products to meet those needs. Memorex is proud to bring you this instructional videotape and to play a part in helping you master all aspects of the personal computer. Something has driven you to learn to use a PC, a personal computer. Oh, either your friends, your kids, your job, or maybe just a desire to join the computer age. Or maybe even all of the above. <laughs> Memorex has created this tape to make the basic technology, functions, and terminology of PCs understandable to you. And finally, you'll understand that techno-nerd babble computerese that you hear all the time. You can view this tape in its entirety, or you can set your counter on your VCR at zero, zero now and check out this video's table of contents and proceed to just the subjects in which you're interested, or go back and review something you've missed. Personal computers are everywhere nowadays. They're a part of so many people's lives. You'll find them in schools, businesses, even at home. What computers can help you do really defines just how powerful they can really be. And to start putting some of that power to work for you, I suggest we begin at the very beginning. There are two basic types. The IBM PC and compatibles are made by many different manufacturers like Dell, Compaq, Packard Bell, among others. There's also the Macintosh family from Apple Computer. Now, it used to be that IBM and Apple were like the, the Klingons and the Romulans of the computer world. But those worlds are merging. The needs of most users now can be met by both systems. Now, if you haven't yet purchased your PC, explore carefully both of these options. And remember, the most important feature of a PC is its functionality. No matter which technology you select, this tape should be a helpful introduction. Now, let's get to work. OK, well, I think you'll find it's much easier than it may have sounded before. So let's discuss the components of a PC. Now, the real brains of a computer are located in the central processing unit, or CPU. The CPU is the chip that does the actual processing and calculations. Some of the most commonly discussed are the 286, 386, and 486. The numbers simply refer to the type and speed of the processing chip in the unit. And no doubt in the future, there's going to be even faster, more powerful machines like 586 turbo powered, Paul, supercharged. Paul, Paul, don't get carried away. Uh, uh, Let's move on to the monitor. The monitor is the computer's display screen and the primary output device. Now, the techno cool name is CRT, which stands for cathode ray tube. You can get monitors which display just one color called monochrome, or you can get color. The resolution of color monitors vary and are referred to as CGA. EGA, VGA, or da -da -da -da, Super VGA. The second most common output device is a printer. There are different types of printers, daisy wheel, dot matrix, and laser jets. Now, they vary in price and capabilities. A good dot matrix printer is quite adequate for a lot of people, although it can be noisy. Laser jet printers produce excellent quality type and graphics and are very quiet but can be quite expensive. The keyboard is the most common input device to enter instructions and information into the computer. Now, there are some special keys that you won't find on a typewriter, like Enter, which tells the computer to accept your instructions. Escape, which is usually found in the upper left, lets you exit the program or function you're working in and back up to the previous step. These are the function keys labeled F1, F2, and so on. These keys can have distinct actions attributed to them, depending on the program. Other input devices like a mouse, trackball, or joystick allow the PC user to move the cursor around to specify an exact location on the screen. The mouse is the most popular. The buttons on it allow you to send commands to your computer by pointing and clicking. A trackball is basically a stationary mouse. It looks like a cue ball set into a pedestal, which you roll to move the cursor. 
Mary, did you know that computers can communicate over phone lines? Yes, I did, via a modem. See, your computer can have conversations with other computers, transmitting and receiving data over a phone line. There are even fax modems that allow users to send and receive fax documents from or to other computers. Sounds pretty nifty. Now, using a PC is not as complicated as I thought it might have been, but Mary, how does it all link together? Well, everything plugs into the back. There's a whole assortment of plugs back there to connect cables, too, that are called ports. Serial ports transmit or process data one bit or character at a time, and parallel ports transmit many bits concurrently. Serial ports are usually used for a mouse or an external modem, and a parallel port is used to connect a printer. Now, what we've been talking about is hardware, but Mary, what's software? Oh, software is the real reason you use a computer. It's computer code, the stuff on disks, programs. Software, or sometimes called application software, tells the hardware what to do. Well, looks like I'm ready to sit down on that comfortable, genuine, Herculean software and start using the old PC. <laughs> what do I do first? Well, first, let's talk about floppy disks. A floppy disk is a plate of magnetic material that stores data in digital form. It goes into the floppy disk drive. Now, it's used to transfer data from one PC to another, or it can be used to back up data from the hard drive. This doesn't feel floppy at all. In fact, it actually looks like a coaster. Well, that's a three and a half inch disk that's been encased in plastic. Now, the other common type is the five and a quarter inch. They both use the same technology and can both be written on or read from. These are double density disks. These can store about 700,000 characters of information. There are also high density disks, which can store around 1.4 million or almost twice the information as a double density disk. Well, which one do I use? Well, it all depends on your disk drive. Newer PCs usually have high density drives, which can read all kinds of disks. Now, Paul, there are a few other inexpensive items that you're going to have to add to your shopping list, like storage boxes to store and organize your disks and to keep them safe from dust and damage, paper for your printer, and a mouse pad, which gives you good traction and protects the mouse and your desk from each other, as well as keeping Oreo cookie crumbs out of the mouse mechanism. Well, Mary, where is the best place to put it then? Well, your computer should be placed in a spot that is convenient, clean, cool, and dry. Dirt, heat, and moisture can damage your PC's electrical components. I guess that kind of rules out the spot next to the heater. Well, yeah. Now, you also want to make sure you get a surge protector. It prevents power fluctuations from damaging circuitry. And you can also use it to protect your power switches from excess wear and tear. Just turn everything on by using the switch on the surge protector. Mary, do I need an anti-glare screen? It's a good idea. It prevents eye strain and just fits over your monitor and prevents light from bouncing off the screen into your eyes. Now, always place your screen so that you're looking down slightly at it. Face the monitor at a 90-degree angle to any window. Well, now that we're at the desk, show me the proper way to sit. Okay. Feet nice and flat on the floor, back straight, forearms level with the keyboard, and my wrists are even supported by this nice little wrist pad here. Looks good. You must have done most of your homework. Um, the soda. Oh, uh, you want to keep liquids away from the unit. And also, be sure to cover the unit when it's not in use. And you can buy a cleaning kit to keep your PC and drive clean and dust-free. So my hardware can actually last longer than the technology. Well, it is constantly changing, but the basics don't. Let's review. Computers process data by converting it into electrical impulses that are either on or off. This is a binary code. Just as Morse code used only dots or dashes, binary code uses zero or one to represent off or on. Each of these pulses is called a bit. Bits, grouped into a pattern of eight, are called a byte. These bits and bytes make up all the numerical information used by a PC. The computer's memory, just like ours, is kept alive by electrical impulses. When you turn it off, it loses everything, unless it's stored on a form of magnetic media, like a floppy or hard drive. There are two types of memory, 
RAM, random access memory, is the computer's thinking power. It's the memory that stores data and instructions the PC is currently using. The more RAM a PC has, the more it can juggle at one time, and the faster it can handle it. Now, ROM, read-only memory, is the memory that is permanently encoded. These are usually the instructions to turn on, set up, and load the rest of the instructions from the disk. ROM cannot be changed and won't be erased when the power is turned off. Now, if you have heard computer jocks talking about megs, <laughs> they're not talking about girls they know. It's short for megabyte or MB. RAM is measured in megabytes. Another thing that is measured in megs is the capacity of the hard drive. Some hard drives have 40, 80, or even more megabytes. A hard drive is the device that stores and reads data on a magnetic disk. It's a large capacity storage device used for long-term permanent storage. The hard drive is where you store the programs and data that you will be using. Let's take a quick tour inside the PC to see where some of the things we've been talking about are located. This is the microprocessor chip, which is the brain of the computer. It's also called the CPU, or central processing unit. Now over here is the floppy disk drive. If there are two drives, they're stacked on top of each other, or side by side. To the left of, or underneath the disk drive, is the computer's hard drive, if you have one. These are the drive's controller cables, which connect to the controller card, which is plugged into the motherboard. The controller card manages the transfer of data to and from the drives. This is the computer's power supply, and here are the cables that power the drive. This is the motherboard. Here are the ROM, or read-only memory chips, and these are the RAM, or random access memory. RAM comes in the form of SIMS, or single inline memory modules. Man, that's a lot of powerful stuff in there. It is. And now that you know what it all is, it's time to boot up the computer. By the way, if you have the feeling she's not talking Western wear, you're right. You see, booting up is computer ease for turning the computer on and getting it up and running by loading the operating system. The operating system tells the PC how to think and communicate. Some operating systems you may have heard of are OS2 or Unix, but the most prevalent is DOS, which stands for Disk Operating System. Developed in 1981 by Microsoft Corporation, DOS has been made more user-friendly with Windows. Now, Windows is a graphic user interface similar in concept to the Macintosh system and can be used with most IBM PCs or compatibles depending on the computer's memory. Now, formatting in DOS is what you must do before you can store files on a floppy disk. Formatting, sometimes referred to as initializing, prepares a floppy or hard drive to accept data. It tells DOS how to find the information you stored on it. In DOS, Directories manage information on a hard disk or floppy. Now, each directory acts as a drawer in a filing cabinet and can contain subdirectories or files. To learn more fully how to use DOS, be sure to reference your manual. The manual? I mean, that's usually the last place I'd check. Well, maybe that's why you still can't program your VCR either. <laughs> no, really, it can be very helpful. And keep it in a place where you can readily get at it to answer any questions. You know, Paul, there's a saying, there are two kinds of computer users, those who have lost their data and those who will. But one of the best habits you can have is backing up, that is, making a copy of your data onto a floppy. It can also be done onto a data cartridge if you have a tape drive. Now, if your hard drive crashes or seriously malfunctions, you have lost everything. And disasters like this can be minimized by copying the contents of the hard drive onto floppies. And, you know, crashes aren't common, but it only takes once to make you a firm believer in backing up. You know, backing up is a lot like flossing. Come on, nobody likes to do it, but you sure want to hold on to your teeth or your data in this case, for as long as you need it. Yeah, but the use and enjoyment you'll get from your PC far outweighs the little drudgeries. Um, Paul, have you thought about the software you're going to need? Well, I know that I want to do word processing. Okay, then you'll want to consider programs like WordPerfect, and Microsoft Word. 
I also have lots of addresses and phone numbers, you know, of friends and clients that I want to keep track of. Mm -hmm. Well, there are several databases that are popular, such as DBase, FoxPro, and Paradox. What about doing budgets? Can anything help? Mm -hmm. A spreadsheet program like Lotus or Excel can come in very handy. Or you might benefit from financial packages like Quicken. You know, desktop publishing is something that you always hear about. That's right. It's easy to do beautiful graphics and layouts with software programs like PageMaker and Ventura Publisher. You can also use your PC to learn an entirely new skill, even a language, through the vast number of educational programs that are available. And uh, after I've settled my current budget crisis, I can kick back and play a few games. Oh, uh -oh. darn it! <laughs> the computer won again. <laughs> You know, it's good you remember to mention that PCs are really fun, too. But you got to put that there. All right. We've talked about a lot of things in this videotape to provide you with a good overview to get started in personal computing. We've gone over the components of a PC. The CPU, the keyboard, the monitor. The printer. And we've talked about how it connects and what you'll need to get started. We've also taken a closer look at the technology. What memory, RAM, and ROM are. What a hard drive is. And how to get started on the DOS operating system. We've also reviewed some safety measures for you, your computer, and your data. And you know what? None of it is hard as they make it sound. All that tech talk, it's no big deal. And if you need further review, check back to the table of contents and then fast forward to the section you need. And you know, this tape is just the beginning of a wonderful new world of personal computing. Thanks for listening. Memorax has been proud to bring you this videotape. In addition to our video library, Memorax brings you the most complete array of products specifically created for the computer user paper, storage, accessories, cleaning products, input devices, power protection devices, and ergonomic products to keep all your computer experiences happy ones. Look for them at your local computer supplies retailer.